onwards. Hello everybody, welcome to a live episode with some very special guests about a very, very fun special pedal. If you're looking at it here, it is the Reverse Mode C. This is a collaboration with two incredible pedal companies in the digital realm that I respect very, very much, Chase Bliss and Empress Audio. And it is all about reversing your guitar and delaying it. It has several modes, um, all kinds of features, modulations, the typical Chase Bliss thing where you can go as far as you want to go with it. It has a built-in built in sequencer. Um, you heard me goofing around and playing with it. It is an amazing device in stereo, and um, I hope, hopefully you heard, noticed and heard that stereo field in your headphones or on your devices. So I have these guests with me. I have the makers of this thing, and I'm very, very excited. So let's welcome to the live stream Empress and Chase Bliss and another special guest, Emily. How you guys doing? We're doing awesome. Yeah, thanks for having us. This is great. great. So em Emily there, you're, you're playing through this, apparently. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, it's probably going to be a little uh, smushed through all of you know the internets and stuff that's um, all right but you can't have emily hopkins at your sh shop and you know have a live stream with y'all and not have her play it's just a rule you know? agreed agreed so i guess to start this off the obvious first question is let me split our screen here um is I, I think it's worth, because there's all kinds of new people in the pedal world, like tell us about each company. Maybe start with Empress. Um, you're such a legendary force in pedals. You predate all of us noobs. So tell us, 
you know, tell the audience who you are, what you do, and then kind of, I guess we could pause before we get into the origin of this pedal, but just mainly who your company is and all about you. Sure, yeah. Yeah, so I uh, I started Empress Effects. My name's Steve Bragg. I started Empress Effects in 2005 uh, with a tremolo pedal. And uh, back then I was inspired by companies like uh, ZVEX and uh, Death Pie Audio uh, and uh, Electro Harmonics, stuff like that. And um yeah yeah the tremolo i feel like i probably should have introduced you because i knew you were going to be like really humble um right. well one thing i always uh like to say when i'm in front of a new audience is that i s s stutter and so uh, especially if people don't uh know who i am it can be kind of uh confusing and um i find that when I just talk about it, it makes me a lot more comfortable. But then also, I think that um, then you know uh, the viewers are like less interested in why I'm speaking in a strange way, and I'm just like, oh, okay, that's just how he talks. So I already feel I already feel more comfortable. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Tell it. Tell us about Empress. Tell us about. Steve. Yeah. So um, I think. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, is the most impressive about Steve and um, impress is impressive about impress. I promise I didn't try to do that. Um, is that you were doing stuff and crafting algorithms um, in, uh, um, a lot earlier than um, I think some people realize. And um, that was certainly the experience that I had when learning about your uh, company. Um, is that Steve was doing stuff with Impress um, uh, really, really early and um, 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 had some really sort of revolutionary concepts and, and um, ideas that were out there. Uh, well before, you know, other stuff. So it's just like really, 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 really awesome and cool and um, something that a lot of people don't know about you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Looking at like pedal history and the first people to think in certain ways, Empress is like right there. Always has been for me. It's amazing. I just want to let the viewers know that uh, Joel and I you know, love each other. We actually have a dog between each other, so that's why we're kind of distant. But uh, otherwise, we'd be real close. So, so Joel, um, tell kind of your origin story as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so I it, actually, yeah, Steve and I were sort of ch chatting about this a little bit uh, earlier. We'll be super interested in hearing, like, uh, what you remember about uh, you know, 2008 and stuff like that as well, Josh. But um, so I, I started working at ZVEX in uh, 2008 and, um, you know, had that whole experience where I just got really in into guitar pedals and really excited about the industry. And, um, you know, of course, Impress was around back then and um, um, we started a friendship and got to know each other um you know through emails originally and um yeah i think i like our friendship trajectory has just kind of been like uh on the rise ever since i, f I can't remember if that was the actual question you asked i'm sorry no, zach. yeah it was just, just how you kind of started right, sorry josh zach's right there this is zach's <laughs> dog too so that's all right this is gonzo yeah you you asked me like what i remember of chase like you starting so we started at very similar times doing such different stuff and so to be completely transparent when i saw like this you know warped vinyl the first edition i remember like my my exploration into pedals was like very diy and like 
I saw this and was like, oh my God, who is this person? It's insane. Like this, you know, is like such a thing to aspire to, even though we were starting at similar times. Then I learned that you had worked with Zach Vex and the Lo-Fi Junkie, which is like one of my favorite pedals ever, period. Like I love that pedal. Um, yeah, I just, I have really fond memories of how Chase Bliss started in relation to how I started. I think there's, there couldn't be really two more opposite sonic companies um but we share a lot of i've met you and hung out with you enough to know there's a lot of similar like vibe and ethic and just workplace environment and all that stuff like all the important things and so i think it's a cool contrast um that's my memory just watching you grow as i grew and yeah, and there's all kinds of fun stuff. Like, I think you, I, I'd been working on the Emperor Vibrato Chorus with Tap Tempo, and I think you beat me by like three weeks or something <laughs> with a Tap t Tempo Bucket Brigade Chorus. I remember the video. <laughs> oh, there was a unicorn. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, it's it, pretty amazing memories. And um, so sitting here now, both of us, basically 15 years after we started, um, how far, Steve... Where are you guys at in the timeline of your history? How many years? Actually, I just have to edit that. I, yeah, I'm thinking about the unicorn. That wasn't that one. But anyway. Okay. They were at the same. They were very yeah, similar yeah, at the same it was, time. It was memorable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I started Empress in 2005. So we're, I don't know, yep. what is that, 17 or 18 yeah. years, which is yeah. kind of crazy. It is, seen that long. it is crazy. So yeah, let's talk, Steve, while you have the mic. This pedal... Um, this reverse mode C is inspired first and became a product because of you and your creation. So tell everyone about that creation. Yeah, so uh, the Super Lay, at first, it was just going to be kind of a, a simple pedal, you know. Um, but the more I, I worked on delay algorithms, I, I couldn't really, I kept on making more of them and I didn't want to cut anything out. And so that necessitated uh, changing up the UI to, I guess, make it a, a big, a bigger pedal with a lot of modes. And uh, one of those modes uh, was a reverse uh, mode that was initially inspired by, there's like a, a little known Sony device called the GP5. It has a reverse mode. Oh and, my uh, gosh. I never, I, I didn't put two and two together. That's cool. Yeah. And, uh, and then I think it, like maybe the first, uh, I might have made a mistake in my programming where I accidentally had like the read head in the code r reading back at, at an octave, you know, it was kind of serendipitous. Uh, and I was like, wow, that sounds better than any other mode now. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't get rid of it. Um, yeah. And uh, this is, oh, there, there's see, our pedal, yeah. Here. Yeah. Well, hold on. A little hard to <laughs> yeah. focus in. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. I think a lot of people have seen this. It's an incredible pedal. Like, thank you. Yeah, for it's just so early in the game of what pedals like this are. Um, yeah, a lot of fans, I'm sure. Yeah, so we released that in 2008, and uh, it's been really nice with this reverse mode C because a lot of people have, have reached out and, and told me how they still have the super lay and. Uh, and a lot of people have it just for that one mode for the most part. So I think it uh, struck a chord with a lot of people. Yeah. So then, Joel, I guess you, you tell this how this whole thing progressed. Because you found yourself loving this thing that Steve was making and then had an idea. I think that's the story, right? Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know... Because Steve was like my, you know, the, the, probably the first like close friend that I had in the guitar pedal industry. And our, you know, our company, Chase Bliss, is known for collaboration. So we we were kind of talking early on, like, well, what, what would be something we could collaborate on? And we threw around some ideas, but it just never felt like this is it, you know? And um, we were uh, in Japan together last fall and um, just spending a lot of time together and talking a lot. And uh, this idea of collaboration came up again. And I was 
I was telling him how obsessed I was with this mode, um, you know, at the time. And I was like showing him some songs, you know, that I used this in. And, um, and we just got to talk about what if we expanded upon that, um, expanded upon that idea. And then we started talking to knobs and he started getting ideas. Then we started getting really excited. Like maybe this is the thing. And the more we thought about it, the more, you know, uh, um, the more we started to think about it conceptually, it just, we started to just get more and more excited about it. Um, and, and, uh, sort of, uh, speaking to what you were talking about earlier, um, it's been so fun since we've announced it. Cause I've gotten a lot of emails, um, from folks that had a similar experience that I did, like really similar, almost kind of spooky where they're, they, they were, they like stumbled upon reverse mode C. They had a super delay and just got obsessed with it. So that's one that like, um, um, a lot of people who had the super delay have had the similar experience. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I think it's worth for a second. I love collaborating. Um, I've been fortunate to do a, Rob, a Robert Keeley collaboration, a Boss collaboration, and then the recent Electro Harmonics thing. And I think again, this is where I earlier said like there's a connect in similarity of like ethos or whatever the fun fancy word is um talk about like your perspective of collaboration and why you think pedals like this are so important i mean for me i guess when we uh when we first started doing collaborations i definitely did not have the thought like this was going to be a staple of the company but then i just kept seeing more and more evidence of just uh you know the pedals we were coming out with when when we were able to uh, collaborate with someone it just made a cooler product and uh this one is no different we never would have like thought of a release this except you know if it wasn't for steve's work and um also just like the friendship aspect of it because you know steve steve and i have known each other for a long time Time and um, you know we get to hang out sometimes but not a lot and just doing this project t- t- together we're talking all the time we're coming up with ideas and uh, it's working on a project that you know together is just a fun thing for friends to do yeah so that's another reason why I love it yeah also in, like back uh, I, don't, I think we met uh, at NAMM 2012 and then so we emailed a bit once we got back from that and then uh, Every once in a while, we'd email each other saying, basically, like, oh, I'm going through this thing. I don't know what to do. You know, because we don't really know what we're doing. We're, we're just, like, trying to, like, run a business. No one knows whether, uh, yeah. yeah. We Especially as for, pedal builders, yeah. Uh-huh. We went to school for engineering, and now we're having to do business stuff. And uh, and it always seems like you're on your own. And you, and uh, so it's, it's nice to be able to talk to someone and be like, does this seem, you know, familiar to you? And it's like, yes, this sounds exactly like what I went through. So it was really yeah. nice having Joel around to, uh, you know, let me know that it's not as as crazy as I think it is. Well, so a quick pause here for the people viewing. Um, I want to do a Q&A in our comment section with you over the air. So Bell's going to navigate that. So if you're watching right now um, in this live environment, toss in some questions about this. So some parameters for this would be, I would love to hear your questions to them about how they create stuff like the motivation for creating the collaboration idea this pedal as a whole um just like i don't know i'm thinking of a hundred questions you know what inspired it what's your favorite part of it etc etc um no questions like you know uh is chase bliss gonna put out a like sitar like we don't want to answer those questions we're gonna keep stuff like really focused here on this pedal um and then bell will kind of gather those and then we'll do like a q a is that cool with you guys yeah that sounds great yeah so right now um kind of a last question from me before that q a it would be interesting um uh, joel i love what you're doing with this batch bliss like uh, tell us about that because 
I've um, I've been dabbling in this idea of like limited releases and stuff, and it's so complex and weird, and like trying to figure out how many and who, and people are disappointed, and you know, I like I like the limited like here it is, it's happening thing, but I also I think your idea is really fun, and you're you're approaching it in a in a different way than I am, and I think it's a really valuable discussion. So maybe, yeah, talk through that with this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So it was really kind of born out of uh, necessity uh, in a way. And I love that you're interested in this stuff, Josh. I feel like, you know, know, it's uh, it's nice to talk to someone about the business stuff. That's, you know, I don't know. We always kind of vibe on this. But um, so uh, we switched our business model from... um, stores to direct to consumer um uh and that like that was a process we started over a year ago but we um filled all the orders that we had on the books to stores but what happened is one once we you know were finished with that and then we started to sell on our website all of our stores you know had tons of stock of our stuff so we ended up just um uh, just had like lots of inventory and, you know, as a small business owner, and we used to, you know, never have inventory cause we'd be, you know, we'd, yeah. we'd be behind all the time and like, you know, uh, we'd be, uh, attempting to, uh, fill orders and get, uh, caught up in all that. Um, so we have all this inventory and, you know, it's like, this whole process of releasing a product is just so uh, terrifying sometimes because, you know, you, you know, you kind of have an, some kind of um, idea of what you think your customers are going to like and how much something's going to s- sell. But it's such I mean, a guess. It's just like we, we're surprised all the time, yeah. you know, and um, um, and then and then some, you know, we kind of have this. uh reputation or i think i do or sometimes we're like oh it's sold out and uh we're, we're, you know we're sorry we didn't know and people are like skeptical you know like what are you you know come on now and and so actually um uh knobs came up with this idea uh and he was like well what if we just have um you know a month-long pre-order where we'll just make everything you know to order and and we can we can uh try it with some um concept ideas that might not be something we would normally do so like something like this is a good example you know like we're building this pedal of around this you know one one load of this uh you know sweet impress pedal that came out in 2008 and you know we think we you know we were able to do some really interesting stuff with it but it it is a weird thing to do so we thought this would be like you know uh a really interesting way to launch this concept for you know the small yeah it's like a it's a perfect way to test it i i think it's i think it's great i'm excited i love i love data and like i like economics and all this stuff so I'm, i'm excited to see how you feel about it with your company and how that reflects and such that's really cool yeah, yeah. I mean, cool. so far, I feel like the response have been um, largely positive, you know. Yeah. Um, I think, like, you know, the biggest concern, you know, was, like, if if someone's interested and they're not able to do the pre-order, you know, this month, are we ever going to make more? And then, but, but that's awesome because in a year from now, if, you know, if it turns out that there's a demand for it, you know, and some people still want it, then we can kind of do the same thing again until you know the demand is met and just sort of yeah see how it goes that's a cool idea well let's let's go over uh, to, uh steve oh go ahead yeah go ahead. I'm, go ahead i'm being a chatterbox sorry steve yeah um yeah i guess like every uh release you're always surprised by either like you you built too many or you you didn't build close to enough always and, uh, yeah josh i was just wondering is there a pedal of yours where you just did not come close to guessing how successful it was going to be right off the bat like off the, the first run uh, it feels it feels like it's 
always wrong. Like, <laughs> like we, we we get a grid and we're like, I remember stuff like the bonsai and those the pack rats, the things that were kind of special for us, you know, the harder things we've done and, and got some of that traction. And things even like the color box, like who's going to buy a $400 pedal that's like, and then you're just like sold out and you're frustrated. And I remember the, the pack rat was very frustrating because we, we built a number that we thought because we're balancing like debt and Mm -hmm. predicting the future like that's a gamble like people don't really i i don't want to discredit most people but i feel like the understanding of like small business like this is so hard to do yeah there's like so much yeah yeah so much risk involved in building more than you think you're gonna because you know we're like hey we're gonna build a couple thousand pack rats and that is several hundred thousand dollars and where is that money coming from and payroll and all and you're like calculating it's that meme where like the guys with the strings on the wall you know and the photo he's like connect it's what it feels like and i just remember the pack rats selling out like so quickly and then we couldn't produce them for a few months and i and it was just like ugh, because then i missed that excitement of a release i misjudged it and yeah it's constantly it's constantly frustrating it's fun yeah. and exciting but there's that constant like ah i got it wrong yeah and the best the best uh, calculating you do is late at night yes. waking up it's like oh yeah and then you tell your partner oh yeah you know um have you heard about this thing where you can remortgage your house? <laughs> yeah, so that everyone can get a pedal. And then you go remortgage your house and nobody buys that pedal. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like some of the, and I've said this often, some of my more unique things that I'm like, oh, this is original, you know, in quotes. Like nobody buys them. And then, you know, I like take this risk on it. And it's like nobody cares. They want a tube screamer. Or like, you know, and I've always fought with like how to predict the market and what people want. It's it's so challenging. Yeah. Okay, sorry to sidetrack, but... No, it's just, fine. Was... Let's jump over to <laughs> Bell and do the Q&A. Sound good? Yeah? Yes, that's great. All right. You ready, Bell? I'm so ready. You're ready. All right. We've got a lot of good questions. It's kind of hard to pick through them, but I've got a few pulled here. Um, what is your method or approach to starting a new design on a new pedal? There's other questions very similar to that. Does it start with a sound or a schematic? How many iterations did it take to land on this combo? Those are like three questions that I casseroled together for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a very complicated question. And I think, uh, at least for Empress, each it really depends on the product, how the, um, what the steps are mm-hmm. making a pedal. So I think it would have to be more specific. I don't know if, uh, and probably with Chase Bliss, uh, this reverse mode C is probably the, it's been much different than the rest of your, your pedals. I don't mm-hmm. know if you want to say more about that. I mean, I think our process has really evolved a lot. Um, it's, uh, nowadays I think like roughly, you know, we have, um, knobs on our staff. Now, if you don't know who, um, who he is, his, his real name's Scott Harper, but he, he ran a YouTube channel for a long time called, uh, knobs. And he has so many ideas that it's, uh, um, <laughs> there was one time where he just, kind of stopped sending me ideas because he could just tell I was super overwhelmed. So he, yeah, there's some ideas he has that I don't even know about, but um, you know, we'll start to talk about it and, and, and we'll talk to Tom. Tom also has ideas and we have another engineer uh, named uh, Charlie, uh, you know, who has ideas. And then we have, uh, we have others on staff like Zach, who's, who's uh, sitting around here, but you can't see him. And then um, we just kind of start to talk about them a lot. And um, I think lately, though, the big thing for us is we want to start to play test as early as possible because sometimes we've made this mistake a lot in uh, the past where we think we have a really cool idea. We'll work on it for a long time and then we'll actually listen to it and it's not cool. Um, But if you can start to play with it and... uh, as early as as uh, 
possible that's like a really wonderful indication for us whether you know something is going to be good or not um but yeah it just seems like it's constantly evolving as well but i would say overall that that's kind of how things are, have been happening lately here for us right somebody asked what have empress and chase bliss learned from each other in the process of making this pedal um i think well when it comes to steve like i feel like uh my personal education is sort of uh never ending you know from the beginning we we actually went back and reviewed our uh early emails from like 10 years ago and it was like steve a dealer wants to carry my products and they're asking for uh the terms my terms what what are terms <laughs> yes then, so it would be like stuff like, you know it's like he's taught me so much and then you know <laughs> net net 365 <laughs> yeah like uh you know, now it's like, you know, asking questions about, you know, like, have you used this, you know, particular VCA or, you know, processor or, you know, what do you think of this, this uh, manufacturer and, and mm -hmm. you know, things like that, all sorts of business stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For us, it's been pretty wild seeing how fast uh, this project has come together. Like Tom, he's been doing all the programming on it so he he does an update to the to the firmware and we we all get together and have a meeting and uh you know give our feedback on it and uh, it's been such a tight feedback loop uh and at the same time eric was working on the the graphic design for it so it's like a, a whole bunch of people working in parallel at the same time and that's not really something that we do at empress we kind of go through like steps and uh so it's made me rethink how we're going to uh, make products in the future because mm. uh, you know, the, the faster you can make them, the less risk you take on without reducing. Because the, the 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 result was, uh, anyway, it's going to speak for itself. But a lot of times you think like the longer you take on a project, uh, the more the better quality it's going to be. And the problem with that thinking is that after you've spent like two or three years on a project, it sucks and you just want to get it done. And it's not really, you're not getting any better at it. It's just like, you're just trying to get the thing out the door. And that didn't happen in this case. It was just, we were flying. And you have to fight like the feature creep thing. The longer yeah, you, the longer you're letting yourself do it. There's some, there's like this law. It's like one of those efficiency laws that says the longer you give yourself to do something, the lower quality it will become it has a name it's like yeah. one of these things and it's bizarre true like it feels like that's not possible but it's usually that like the gut instinct and the quick draw that's where like the creativity happens and you just execute it and like we've experienced that where it's it's like the more we sit on a thing like you were saying joel you'll be playing it like why are we even working on this you know you like you kind of figure that out it's interesting. Yeah. So yeah. Is yeah. something else there? Oh yeah. Yeah. I read a good thing about how the mega project, uh, the explanation for why it gets longer and longer is because once people know it's a mega project, then they, <laughs> then they're like, the only way to get this idea done is to put it into the mega project. So it just keeps on making it longer and longer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And back over to Bill. All right. Um, a lot of people are talking about how much they love your enclosure design and are asking where the inspiration came for the enclosure design for this one, along with the dip switches. Everybody's like, where did you, how did the idea for the dip switches originate? How did you think about the dip switches? <laughs> Everybody wants to know. <laughs> Let me show this so that people are, uh, the dip switches, this is incredibly Chase Bliss. You not only have six controls, toggles, another toggle here, two foot switches. It's like a spacecraft. And then right here you have this. So it is insanely, the user interface is wildly inventive and, uh, and, and intuitive somehow. So that's what they're referring to. If you're unfamiliar with this line, just showing that for you, Jill, so you can talk out of that. Yeah. I mean, um, for the dip switches, uh, um, uh, one of my favorite pedals of, um, of all time is the boss 
BB2. And when I started to work on my own designs, one of the the one of the things I really liked about that pedal is this weird feature where um, if you turn the pedal on, you can like ramp up the depth of yeah. uh, the vibrato. And so I'm like, oh, I want my vibrato course. Yeah, I, I want that to be able to do that. And then I'm like, well, if I'm doing the digital control, I could do that with any parameter. And then I was like, well, how is the person going to be able to like set that up? And I wanted to be able to, you know, uh, let you, you users be able to co uh, control things with expression. So then I'm, I, I, I kind of just thought that that would be a way to be able to select lots of little options. It's turned into this whole thing, though, where uh, it's like really associated with the brand, which I'm kind of ambivalent about because I love that it is. But at the same time, there's so many people at like NAMM show at the trade show or whatever, and they they look at the dip switches. And they're like, that's not for me. It's like <laughs> there's just it's there's no getting past it you know it's like ah oh, shoot okay I'll, I'll say on this though i i will say it's a huge part of your brand from the outside and i love it i think it's it's a home run and sometimes i think great brands things that happen to brands in all in all fields of the market like you know whether it's a dishwasher or a car or a pedal i think some of those things are accidental just because it's like you know you get to some means to an end i will say though I think I'm historically like, give me the amp with one knob and like a fuzz pedal. I'm that guy a little, but I've really enjoyed your brand pushing me out of that because it's, it's, um, I think with gear, I can be really simplified and I'm, I'm like very to the point, but what's fun about your brand, I make those pedals for myself. That's JHS. Those are like to the point. I have some stuff with more knobs than most people want, but your brand is this exploratory moment. And I think like that's really fun. And I've, I've actually learned in the last few years, the older I get, ironically, your pedals have been helpful in like setting down and just, it's almost like some Zen mental creative thing where it's not to the point. I don't, I just mm -hmm. want to play. And then you don't have to use them. That's the other trick. Yes, like definitely. that's that's yeah. what I that's the funny part when I hear people talk about. It. I've actually told people for years, like you don't have to use all the dip switches. Like chill just out, cover you know? them up, just right? Put some tape over them or something. Yeah, I will just say though that your brand has been interesting for me. It's almost like this: get on the thing and see where it goes, and it's cool. It's it's an mm -hmm. experience. It's like a friend, like a weird friend that you know usually is pretty cool but you know sometimes they do some wild stuff yeah sometimes you gotta turn that dip switch off and run <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right yeah your your guys's pedals are like that friend that you come over and they're like you want to see my collection of like <laughs> something <laughs> and then let's go jump off the roof <laughs> right um how much stock do you guys put into creating something totally unique versus an improvement on a pre-existing pedal? Ooh, I want you to answer this one, Steve. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> I think it kind of goes back to like the previous couple of questions where it's kind of terrifying coming up with a doing a new pedal. Um, so it's really like where where you're how safe you're feeling psychologically is basically mm. dictating the the path of the company uh yeah i mean some it's kind of a double-edged sword though because we just came out with uh the second version of um our mood pedal and uh you know the first version was like our it was the, the most well known i think of our line and but we worked super super hard on the second one and i think like initially the reaction was a little bit like oh it's just like a new version of a mood but we're like no it's like this new thing um but i also think you know there is something about you know how you know sequels you know or movies you know, there's sort of a reason why they exist because you already have you know an audience that's like interested in that thing so 
Yeah, sometimes they're cool and sometimes they're not. Yeah, like um, I guess a lot of times you're trying to with the first version of something you're trying to guess what people want, and uh, and a lot of times you 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 guess wrong, and then so it is really nice to come up with uh, with a second version to you know usually there's like three or four things that yeah like you get, you get real feedback instead of just you know what you think is right um but yeah the danger in that is just to keep on doing the same old thing and so it is good every once in a while to do something you know totally totally out there what is your favorite pedal to stack with the reverse mode c Ooh, i i don't think i've actually st stacked it with i guess just besides distortion um i haven't really played it in series with anything i've just been you know knee deep in like assessing the features that it has uh without anything else i would say for me it's any kind of a looper because i like when you can create a moment of uh something really unexpected and then you could maybe like capture that with another device and be like okay i got that locked in and then like keep messing around with reverse mode c yeah i want to chime in on that i think there's this interesting thing with this pedal and a couple of your pedals you can experience this where i love like analog recording tape i love rack mounts i like the it's the exploratory thing. It's the crazy part of my mind that likes to jump off the diving board. And I think that's why your pedals have found this interesting space in my creativity. But I, there's the interesting thing that you just mentioned. Do you, I have to ask this question for you, Joel. Do you create a lot of this with that mindset of it's okay to never find that sound again? Do you actually think that way? Um. I don't know if intentionally um, I did, but but yeah, I've adopted that um, because it's although, a, it's amazing. It's it's that it, it you may never find it again, but that's the point. Is how sometimes yeah. your pedals come across. Yeah, although now I'm realizing realizing that last question. I'm really interested in what you have to say. Is there one you like this? To, I know you have lots of pedals, obviously. I mean, I just like to put. Well, it's like, I feel like this is the obvious answer, but I like to put a reverb after it. Mm -hmm. I think that's what, I mean, we still have to experiment with stacking all kinds of different effects, but yeah, I would say reverb after. Cool. That's great. And back over to Belle. There we go. Um. Okay. Let's do a couple more questions. Or, yeah. Well, one more or two more? I can, we can do two, we can let's do, do two more. Let's, let's do two more. But can we have time so I can show everybody my most prized possession? Actually, you should just do it right now. Okay. Yeah. Show I them. got this in 2022. This came in the mail after we did a live stream and I just pointed to a pedal with a lot of knobs on it and Josh played it and I really liked it. And I got a certificate of appreciation from Empress FX <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I never got a chance to thank you guys for this, so just know that this has been my bragging rights in this building. It's been hanging above my desk for a year. Um, anytime somebody it. wants to act like they're better than me, I just... That is sweet. That is sweet to hear. When we first made those, at first, I, I have a neighbor that had, like, really nice handwriting, and I was going to get him to, to write them all, and um, and it, that turned out to, to not really work out, and then I... I was like, oh, I can't write them myself because my handwriting, as you can see, is terrible. It's really beautiful. It's my most prized possession. <laughs> I'm glad, yeah, I'm happy to hear it say that. All right. Um, well, can you, could you ask, at the end, could you ask one question that's like the worst question there so we can just veto it? Um, you want to do one more real question and then and then bomb yeah, it out? Yeah, we want to hear the worst question. That's okay, I'll ask you one more real question. They'll find something really bad. I'm also so tempted to try the nightmare experiment of playing along with Emily. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no way it would work. Let's do it. We got to do it. But this pedal's so ambient that I'm like, what if? It might work. <laughs> All it right, will that's work. how we'll go out. Okay. <laughs> All right, back over to Bill. Um, okay, what were some pedals that you guys fell in love with as younger players that personally inspired the trajectory of your companies? Ooh, uh, the Microsynth, I think, really, uh, you know, because it it's a guitar pedal, but 
you know, I'm trying to make your guitar sound like a synth. That thing was amazing. Um, I guess, uh, I don't even know the name of it anymore. It was like a really cheap green phaser uh, that I loved. Um, I don't think, no, it was like a cheap knockoff brand. And that the Sony GP5 was, was awesome. Um, so I worked from Z, or I worked at Zvex from uh, 2008 to 2013. So I was like really, really into the Fuzz Factory and the Lo-Fi Loop Junkie. Um, and then the Super Delay uh, was just huge for me. Also, I was like really into the uh, Mutron um, Phaser and uh, the Biphase. Emily, this is a good question for you too. I mean, Mood was actually the first pedal that I really tried. Um, that's why Russ and I started our channel. I'm going to try to play while talking at the same time. This is my own. Um, so yeah, Mood is really special to me because um, it was the first one I tried. And even back then, I wasn't comfortable improvising at all. Um, and then I just got comfortable with it over time. But Mood is like our beginning. Like Mood is where we started. So I think it's like really nice to like come, kind of come full circle now. I forgot what the question was. I'm just talking about my first pedal, but yeah. Cool. That's great. That's great. All right, Belle, you got to throw down on this wacko question. So there weren't actually that many dumb questions, believe it or not, for once. <laughs> but I asked everybody, send me some dumb questions. And somebody said, does it work on bass? <laughs> no. Um, no. It, it'll break your bass. Yeah. Hold on, I saw the word Barbie movie. I need to read this. What pedals would Emily use for the Barbie movie soundtrack? Oh my god. Oh my god. That's such a that is a ridiculous question. Yeah, it's kind of a I don't can I even, I would play it right now, but we get copyright striked. I'm a Barbie girl. Uh, what what do you think? What would we even use? Uh, Russ is here too, so you wanna say hi? Hi Russ. Don't say that. No, he said something pink. It's Astral Destiny. Yeah, Astral De I Lucky Cat. Lucky Cat. Yeah. Astral oh, De okay, there we oh, go. I'm just going to name pink pedals and I remember. Uh, what else? What else? <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I would use, yeah. Something nice and reverby. All right, last one. What? Which of your pedals would taste the best? <laughs> uh, we just did a limited edition art for the Mood Mark II, and it was uh, had, like, the birthday cake vibes, and it, I... Wanted, yeah, I, would I wanted to eat. Pretty cool and good. Now I'm hungry. I've been starving this entire time. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna veto this. Not because it's that bad of a question, but because I just want to veto something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So here's what we're gonna try. All right. I, I've thought. I am thinking. I can play along to you. I think because you're coming through the interwebs to me. We're synced on this into the stream. I think I can play along to you and it might work. As long as we don't use a drum machine because then you wouldn't hear, like it wouldn't work. Is there any closing comments before we disappear and, and close the stream down on a horrible experiment? I, I would say the only surprise I had is uh, when Bill was talking about her most prized possession. I thought it was going to be... Uh, the duck that sort of like mm. Emily Hopkins duck. Oh, Emily Duckkins. Yeah, em Emily Duckkins. This is actually, I'm sorry guys, this might be one of my most prized possessions. <laughs> yeah. um, I tried to say the word ventriloquy? Ventriloquy? <laughs> <laughs> this is my duck where I control <laughs> Emily. <laughs> um, if you ever see her acting funky, it's just because I'm like, hey buddy. <laughs> She has a nose ring. <laughs> so, all right. Are we going to try this? Are we good? This, I, I just want to say it's been amazing having you on. This is so fun. Thanks, I, Josh. I like, can't thank you enough. Oh, I love it. I love this space of just having conversations and, you know, let people watch them who are interested. I'm really, I'm really honored to get to do this for you guys. And uh, the pedal's amazing. So... Just a no-brainer. There's so many great demos of this. So reverse mode C. Go check it out. Get on the pre-order thing. How many days are left for that? 30, I think, oh, exactly. That's great. Yeah, you got so plenty of time. Timing. Yep. 
Um, yeah, it's like a cup of coffee. If you just don't drink a cup of coffee, you can buy this pedal. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you getting your coffee, Josh? I don't want to talk about it. All right. Well, I, anyway, but for real, this has been really fun. We'll have to revisit this. Joel, Steve, y'all are all welcome out here anytime. And um, Thanks, Josh. I look forward to seeing you somewhere soon. Who knows? Um, all right. What key? You, you lead the way, Emily. Give me a good... Give me a guitar like, key. But, None of that like E flat stuff. Are you an E flat? I'm an E flat. Come on. It's so good. All right. I get what you what do you want B flat? I can do E flat. We did do E flat. It's like it's nice. Yeah, you can. Okay. Make a mistake. No one's judging. It's fine. Okay. Let's try. It's working. <laughs> this is Barbie Heimer. Barbie Heimer. <laughs> working though. Someone said, I have one of those eye headaches and Emily is healing it. I'm so curious how it feels on your end. I bet it's so off. <laughs> you do a great, it's beautiful. I mean, this is the best online collaboration I've ever heard. I've been in a lot of failed attempts. We're just pushing those boundaries, you know? We're pushing the internet boundaries. <laughs> Emily, I kind of, we should consider trying this, like, just for the sake of seeing if it would work, an entire live stream. Oh, yeah, just try stuff. Just try stuff. Might stumble onto something. I think we have another guest in the room here that wants to show something off. I'm not sure what this is about, but uh, here that is. Nick is trying to make a point. I just want to say, oh. I, too, also have a certificate of appreciation from Empress. <laughs> You guys don't know what you started by sending me one of these and then sending him one. Because this was my bragging rights. This was all I had. I'm sorry. We'll make another version, like a one with more sparkles. <laughs> and we'll, we'll only send one to one of you. What I think Joshua mean? might also have one. Oh, I do have one. I just didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, yeah everybody, I, people I started didn't. getting them. It became a battle. It became a real HR nightmare in here. <laughs> <laughs> How to work it out. All right. Well, this has been super fun. Again, can't say enough about 
you guys and you too, Emily. Um, but just this product that you two have created, um, it's super fun, super inspiring. So thanks for what you do. Thanks for what you're making. And honestly, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, thank you very much for having us. We really appreciate it. We didn't, uh, we thought it was kind of crazy even even asking you and and uh yeah it's been... i loved it this is a really fun opportunity cool see y'all real soon see ya bye bye